Let's pray. Father, I want to give you all the glory and adoration. Thank you, Father, for this time that your word is coming. Holy Spirit, may you anoint this lips of mine to speak your word. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice today will be blessed by this word. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of the message is Provoking a Father's Blessing. Provoking a Father's Blessing. Provoking a Father's Blessing. Now, the word provoke is to cause the occurrence to make something happen. To cause the occurrence or to make something happen. Hallelujah. Provoking a father's blessing. You know, when I talk about a father's blessing, I'm talking about two kinds of blessings. The first one has to do with our earthly fathers. You know, the Bible says that we have to obey and honor our parents. Exodus chapter 20 verse 13, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2. That we have to honor our fathers which is the first commandment with a promise, so that our days on earth shall be long or will be prolonged. Hallelujah. So to honor a father, in return, you get something much bigger. The first commandment with a promise attached, that as you obey that commandment, automatically you get in return a reward which is long life. Hallelujah. So it is very important that we honor our fathers. We honor our fathers. As long as they are alive, as long as they exist. It doesn't matter how you were treated when you were young. It doesn't matter what happened between father and mother as you were growing up, the things you saw happen between them, whether you were happy or not. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Hallelujah. Honor your parents. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Because as you do unto them, so shall your children also do unto you. And the reward you get from honoring your parents, it is something that money can never buy. Long life. Long life connotes good health. Hallelujah. You need good health in order to live long. Amen. So it is very important as we bless them, as we give them what is due them, as we take good care of them, as we make sure they are fed, you know, Bible says we shall be rewarded. When they take care of you from your infancy till you become an adult, even in some circumstances, you don't get that fatherly love or motherly love that you have wished because of circumstances surrounding the marriage or your birth and, you know, whatever happened in your life. But the Bible says we should still honor them. Hallelujah. Whatever they should have done, which they refuse to do for you, it is between them and God. But yours is to obey the word of God so that you will provoke their blessing. Because when you give them a place to sleep, you give them the clothes to wear, you feed them, whatever they say into your life will happen by virtue of the position that God has placed them. They carry that blessing. And you've got to do something to provoke it. Hallelujah. It is very important, church, that we do this. Amen. I know sometimes it is hard, it is difficult, because you know what happened as you were growing up. But church, this is the word of God for you today. Amen. We need to honor our earthly parents or natural or biological Parent. It is very, very important. Praise God. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about, our spiritual parents or spiritual fathers. It is very crucial 
that we look at this and do it. And I'm telling you, your blessing will never be denied you. Amen? In Luke chapter 22, verse 35, Jesus Christ sent the disciples to go and preach the gospel. And when they came back to him, he asked them a question. He said, when I sent you, did you lack anything? When I sent you, did you lack anything? Now, when Jesus was sending them, he said, do not take anything with you. As you are going, just go empty-handed. Why? He knew that the people that he's sending them to are supposed to or have the responsibility to host them, take care of them, feed them, make sure that they don't lack anything. Hallelujah. When I sent you, did you lack anything? Now, what he does is that though he send you empty-handed, but he gives you special grace, which is the blessing in the mouth of the servant of God. Hallelujah. So that the place where you are received, he says, leave your blessing in that place when they receive you. Amen? In other words, when you go to a place and they do not receive you, he says what? Shake off the dust of your feet. In other words, take your blessing with you. So to honor, to take care of the servant of God, of the prophet of God, it is something that we need to look at it very, very carefully. There are some of us, it would take just one word from the mouth of a servant of God to unlock certain blessings in your life. It would take just one thing that you would do to provoke a man or a woman of God to receive a blessing beyond your imagination. And the word that I'm presenting to you is to the whole world. People watch from all over. So don't think that it's, 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 it's just for living waters. Hallelujah. It takes somebody to do something to provoke a blessing. I can always speak into your life. I can always say God bless you. I can always say good things into your life. But there are days when certain things are done. And the man of God feels provoked and speaks into your life, I'm telling you there is a huge difference. That is the fact and that is the reality. You know, there was a time that the Moabites were coming to fight the Israelites and then they went to the prophet of God, Elijah. And then, you know, he said, what do I have to do with you? I have nothing to do with you. Just go and look for your prophets, you know, to help you with this. I'm not ready to talk. When you go to 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15, Elisha was very angry with them because somehow I think they were not giving him the respect or the honor or the reverence that was due him. So he said, go to the other prophets that you have been seeking. You know, I'm not ready to talk. Now, the king went on to plead with him. Then he said, at this point, I have nothing to give you. He was waiting until something happens before he could speak. So at a point, he said, call me a minstrel to sing unto me. And then as the minstrel started playing the harpist, the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came upon the prophet, and then he started speaking to them the things that they are supposed to do to save themselves from their enemy. Amen? Amen. Always something has to be done to provoke the man of God to speak. Amen? First Samuel chapter 9, verse 7, same thing happens in the old days. They knew that to go to a man of God, which they used to call a seer, a seer, before they changed the word to prophet, you have to go with something. You remember the story where Saul, you know, the father asked him to go and look for a donkey that was missing. And then when they got to a, a town, and then somebody said, no, there, there is a man of God uh, over there. We need to go and see him. Perhaps he will be able to tell us which way, which direction we should go. And Saul said this, 
that what is it that we will give to the man of God if we go up to him? Hallelujah. And the guy who was working with him told him that I have a quarter of a shekel. And when we go, I will present it to the prophets. Amen. And lo and behold, when they got there with their presentation and everything, God actually had a plan for him to be there at that time. And the Bible says they had what they wanted. Amen. So I want us to understand that certain things are embedded in the mouth of a servant of God. I'm not talking about anybody who calls himself a prophet or a man of God or a self-style pastor. No. I'm talking about somebody called of God and sent unto his people. He carries that special grace. And when they speak into your life, when they are provoked and they speak into your life, things do happen. Amen. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 27. Genesis 27, read from 1 to 4, please. I read. Now it came to pass, when Isaac was old, and his eyes were so dim that he could not see, that he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, and he answered him, Here I am. Then he said, Behold now, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and make me savory food, such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Hallelujah. Now, this is about Esau and Jacob. And Isaac was old in age. His eyes were dim. He was about to die. But the blessing of a father was still with him. And he was not supposed to die with it. He must release it before he dies. You know, that is why sometimes some of our parents, you know, they love you so much. And, you know, it doesn't matter which part of the world you are. When they realize that they are about to die, and sometimes they know. When they're about to pass on, they will send you a message quickly, come, because I want to have a conversation with you. And sometimes as soon as they finish that conversation, that's it, they are gone. Hallelujah. So this man said, before I die, I want to impact blessing unto you. But before I give unto you, I have to be provoked by something. Prepare me a meal, a savory meal. Go. Look for a game and prepare that which I like most. And after I have had that meal, then whatever I speak into your life will come to pass. You need to do something to provoke a father's blessing. It is very important. Hallelujah. He was a man of God, a man in the spirit. He could have just opened his mouth and said, Esau, I bless you, this, that, that. I said, no, before I speak... Something must happen. Something must arouse my soul. You, you, you use the word so that my soul, it is not just my mouth that I'm speaking with, so that my soul from within me, I would release that virtue into your life, provoking a father's blessing. He didn't say, Father, you can just speak and later we can talk about the meal. He went ahead and did what the father told him. And after that, when you go to the verse 27 to 29, whatever the father said came to pass, provoking a father's blessing. It is very important. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. First Kings chapter 17, verse 12 to 13. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sent rain on head. Hallelujah. So this was a season of famine that 
people were very careful. People were rationing food, making sure that whatever they had with them will last them until such a time that rains will come down so that they will be able to plant and harvest more food. Amen? Now, here is a woman whose meal or dough is left with a, just a small portion of it, with the oil. And he, she went out to the field trying to gather some firewood to prepare that meal. And then a prophet of God appears to her, and he said, Woman, what are you doing? She explains the situation to her, and he said, I understand whatever you are saying, but before you prepare the meal for yourself and your son, go and prepare a meal for me first. Hallelujah. First, he, he asked for water, and he said, in addition to the water, prepare a meal for me. That sounds like Oliver Twist. Amen? Prepare a meal for me. And the woman said, all that I have is so little. It's just for me and my son. And we're just going to eat this, and after that, there is no hope. Nothing to expect again so that we die. He said, no, just change your heart and your mind about the things you are talking about. You seem to be afraid that there is no hope. All that you have is going to finish and you are going to die. All I need is for you to be obedient. Respond to my request favorably. And after that, you will not regret you did. He said, yes, we are going to die after. Because there is nothing. That is all that we have. In fact, in our days, we'll call it uh, widow abuse. Because uh, for you, a man of God, you are supposed to sympathize with her. She's a widow. She has nothing. That's all he said. Prepare for me. All I need for you to have faith in the word that I've spoken to you, that after you prepare this meal for me, oil and flour will never run out in your house. If you will allow your faith to come alive, when faith comes alive, obedient will also come alive. And when obedient is put into practice, blessings are automatic. Blessings are automatic. Miracles are inevitable. So you say, woman, respond to what I have said. Just obey it. The woman went ahead to do what? The prophet had asked her to do. Hallelujah. She received the prophet in the name of a prophet. That is exactly what she did. Listen to the prophet of God. Did what she was supposed to do. And as a result, we all know what happened after. Two years, two good years, after that encounter with the prophet of God, according to scripture, her house never ran out with oil nor food. Hallelujah. Because she provoked the man of God, and the man of God blessed her. And until rain came back, she was always having food in her house. Amen. Provoking a father's blessing. Now, another point I would like to talk about is to make sure that it is important we identify the needs of God's servants and attend to them. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we think that men and women of God are paid, and therefore it, it is not necessary for you to go out of your way to do anything extra. It is, it is not true. It is not true. Whatever they pay a man of God or a woman of God is a stipend. Beyond whatever is given them, there are certain things you can go out of your way to do, and it will be a blessing to you. I remember one lady who was struggling with um, her immigration document for years. And on a particular birthday of mine, a surprise birthday was given. And after that, I spoke into her life. I, I prayed with her. And that very year, she just broke through. She got her documents and everything, landed. You see, there are things that 
it comes out of the mouth of God, of, of, of the servant of God, and they work miracles. Hallelujah. When we identify a need of a servant of God, we need to go ahead and do it. Because one thing we need to understand, God does not bless the organization or the church. God blesses the church through the servants he has placed there to take care of the church. Let, let, let us get this, and I want to say it again. God does not bless people who have come together and say this is a church. But the one that he has called and sent, that person becomes the connecting point for God's grace, favor, protection, and all those things to come upon the church. So it is very important they are well taken care of. Because as we do unto them, the blessings are innumerable. Hallelujah. Provoking a father's blessing. You see, sometimes we think that maybe they have too much and it is not necessary to give them again. You know, but it, it is not about what they have. It is about you being obedient to God. There are some people that I bless personally almost every month. And, and these are people who fly planes. They, they are all over the world doing God's work. They are rich. They have whatever. It does not mean that because they have it, so I should not bless them as a spiritual father. Hallelujah. I'm drawing your attention to something. So don't look at people and say, oh, look at his shoe, look at his suit. Well, what does, does, does he need? No. I know men of God who have said, though they have the millions of dollars, still their sons and daughters are doing certain things. I'm talking about even their biological children. They are still giving to them as fathers so that they will have the blessing from them as their parents. Though the fathers are rich, but yet they are giving to them what they are supposed to give to them. Hallelujah. Because sometimes that is the problem. And most of the time, we look at them, we do our own calculation. We think they have this, they have that, and that. no. If you do that, what they carry will never come upon you. We bless people all the time. If I tell you my, my donation receipt from all over the world, Russia, Israel, every place. As money comes to me, I just distribute it all over. And as I do that, I still get being blessed. I give to spiritual fathers. We buy in suit. We are buying this. We, we are doing all kinds of things. And we know what we are getting in return. So I'm teaching you a principle. There are some things. It is not about the providence of God. It is not about the general blessing of God. I'm talking about things that you have to go by the principles of the word of God and attract those blessings in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So church, we need to do what we have to do to provoke the blessing of God. A true man of God Whatever they have, they also give. They don't just keep it to themselves. You know, a man of God says something. Bishop Oedipo said, you know, the reason why most Christians and pastors are dying is that they just keep taking, 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 and they are not giving out. You know, when you keep eating and eating and you don't, you know what happens? You will die because you grow fat, 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 and one day you will just explode, boom, and that's the end of it. So as you are getting, you need to discharge. Hallelujah. And, and that is what we do. So when people are complaining, oh, these men are rich, these men of God, I say, look, two things I think about men that they talk about as rich pastors. The means by which they acquire the money. And number two, how they spend it, how they disperse it. Is this something they are using to promote the kingdom of God? These are the two things. Hallelujah. And that is what we need to look at. It is very important. Sometimes it is so sad we fail to do what we are supposed to do for men and women of God because we think that, you know, it is not necessary after all they, they, they're getting salary or they are getting something like that. 
But this one, I'm talking about something that you've got to do on your personal level to get a blessing from them. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we feel that when a, a pop star or rock star or uh, whoever, those boys, eh, they are riding in the planes and driving nice cars, living in a mansion and all that, that, that is fine. But when it comes to a servant of God, that is a taboo. And that is not a good spirit. If I have it and I'm using it to bless and further the kingdom of God, I think it is good. It is about time money should change hands. We should not count believers out when it comes to financial prosperity. The kingdom of God is not advancing the way it should because somehow we feel that we, we don't belong where the riches of this world should be. It is not a good mentality. Hallelujah. Provoking that which God has placed upon his servant. Amen. It is very important that we learn to take good care of the servants of God. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full one. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to 1 Kings. You read from 2 Kings? Yeah, let's go to 1 Kings. Because I have read that scripture already. Hallelujah. Now, let's move on to Philippians chapter 4. I think because of time, I will run this out quickly. Philippians chapter 4, let's read the verse 17. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. 17 to 19. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full. Having received from the Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we are talking about Paul here when he was in Rome uh, as he was under house arrest. And Bible says there was a church that remembered Paul. And this wasn't the first time they were supporting Paul in his ministry. Uh, when he was in Thessalonica, uh, that is uh, about 10 years prior to this time, the Bible says that this same church, the Philippi church, they gathered together certain things that they felt that the servant of God would need for his personal life and for the ministry. And the Bible says that they send these things to him. And out of that, he was able to reach out to the church in Thessalonica and then the Corinthian church. They were a blessing to him. Again, this time round, when he was in Rome, the Bible says this church did not forget about the servant of God. And then they sent certain gifts unto him. Now, in verse 17, verse 17 of Philippians chapter 4. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Not that I seek the gift. When they send the gift to him, then he sent this word back, the Philippian church. And he said, not that I seek the gift. In other words, in order for him to diffuse that slanderous, you know, accession by most people. That, you know, men of God want to use the gospel to 
uh, amass wealth or to make money or to solicit for help. He said that, not that I seek the gift from you, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your accounts. In other words, as we give unto the men and the women of God, the Bible says it is credited into our account. Hallelujah. Whenever we bless them, there is an investment we are making in the heavenlies. Amen? And this uh, investment we are making, the dividend of it is guaranteed. That it will be credited, not that I need it. I know how to live in plenty and how to live without nothing. But so that it will be credited to your account, it is good that you give unto me. Verse 18. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from the Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. He said, I am abound, all abound, and I am full which connotes that the things that they sent to him satisfied all the needs, all the necessities at the time. I am full for what I have received. There is no other need. Hallelujah. It means that what was presented to him was something that was good, great, bountifully presented to him. He said, for what I have received, now I am full in all that I need. And it is a sweet smearing aroma, an acceptable sacrifice. For him to use the word sacrifice, it is talking about the Levitical order of ritual that they used to do. You know, at the time, the people understood only sacrifice to mean that people bringing animals before God and place them on the altar and begin to burn them. He said, no, now what you have done to me, it is in the same vein that you have presented. It is a sacrifice as your fathers used to do. And now it has become a sweet aroma in the nostrils of the father. Hallelujah. So as you have given to the servant of God, before God, it becomes a sacrifice, acceptable, pleasing to the Lord. Amen? Amen? And then he went on to bless them. Verse 19. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And my God, and my God. In other words, the returns, the interest, the dividends of this investment you have made, it is guaranteed that you are going to receive something from the God that I serve. Because he's the one who has called me and sent me at this time. And your reward is guaranteed. My God, not me as the apostle, not me as the servant of God, but the one who called me and sent me, whose economy is forever sure and stable, where interest rate does not fluctuate, where everything you invest, you are guaranteed of the dividends, I guarantee you, he will bless you. He will bless you. And any one of you, the one way or the other, has been a blessing to us last week and this week. I say, my God, that I serve, will bless you. He will supply all your needs in Christ Jesus. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 to 42, you know, Jesus says something that connotes that whenever a man or a woman is called, he carries a blessing. And the only way to get that blessing, you need to provoke it. He who received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly, I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. 
Hallelujah. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, I shortly I say to you, he shall by no means, by no means lose his reward. So there is always a reward attached to the giving to the servant of God. Amen. Church, this is real. This is practical. This is something that we experience all the time. You know, there, there is a story about a woman that we all know about the Shunammite woman. Bible says that there was a prophet of God, you know, always passing by in his neighbor, her neighborhood. And this couple happened to be very rich people. They were very rich people. You know, they had their own building, everything set up. They, they had a higher status in society because they were very rich. And one day, this woman told the husband, you know what? I see this man as a man of God. I see him passing by all the time. He's going about doing his ministerial work and all that. But I'm wondering if we can do something to host this man. And as this woman was sharing this with her husband, she had no ulterior motive. She had no you know, uh, uh, idea or plans to get something from the servant of God. All she needed to do was to give this man a place to stay whenever he came around. So the Bible says that the husband agreed because of this man, they built another room. Not that they had a room and then they furnished it. They built another room attached to their house. Furnished the place. Made the place habitable and then invited the man of God into the house. Church, whenever you bless a servant of God, you will be blessed. And Bible says that as they brought this man into the house, though this woman, they were rich. They had all the money. There was nothing they needed in life. But then there was something that they lacked. And that was the fact that they did not have a child. Probably she was into all kinds of business. Getting the you know, money from left and right. And they had invested. Because the Bible says that they, the husband was old at the time. Which suggests to me, probably they were just enjoying their retirement benefit and their pension, their RSPs and everything was yielding. And they are getting all that they wanted in life. But then there was a need that money, investment, whatever, could not satisfy. But by inviting the man of God into their home, the Bible says, as the man of God entered the house and he saw and realized that this is a brand new place, they have built purposely because of me. And look at the furniture they have purchased and everything, the curtains and everything. The Bible says the man of God became provoked. And he said, Gehazi, go and call the woman for me. And when the woman came and the prophet of God said, woman, what is it that I should do for you? He said, man of God, in fact, you are the one that needs a place to sleep. That is why I've set up a place for you. As for me, look at my house, look at my cars, look at my investment, look at, just look at the surroundings. I live in a, in a prime area of the city. Hallelujah. There is nothing else I need. The man of God said, it is too late. Even if you want to refuse this blessing, I must bless you. There was something that is lacking in your life. As you have blessed me, I must bless you. So tell me, what is it that you lack? The woman still, it never occurred to her that there was something that was lacking that the man could do for her. Or probably she knew, she was well aware that she did not have a child. But looking at the age of the husband who has rich purpose and the factory is already collapsed and it's not working, she knew that as far as babies are concerned, it was over. But you know, when you provoke a prophet of God, all things are possible to them who believe. He said, woman, there was something that I want you to talk about. There is a lack in your life. The woman still said, I don't need anything. I just felt that I need to do this for you. You see, sometimes, you know, so, somebody feels that, you know, as I do this for the man of God, if something does not happen, then that's it. You are not going to get anything from me. 
This woman came with a willing heart and did it without any ulterior motive. You know, so don't, 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 don't leave that hundred dollars and say, tomorrow is the contract. I'm giving this to pastor. If I don't get this contract, it's the last dollar this man will get from me. Bible says she just did it willingly. And then after this woman has resisted to speak about what she needed, the servant of God told the prophet, the prophet of the servant said, no, this woman I have seen in the house, but ever since we came here, there's no child here. So she doesn't have a child. Hallelujah. So the prophet called the woman. He said, a year by this time, you're going to have a child. You are going to have a child. Hallelujah. As long as you have provoked me, I must leave something in this house. I remember when we were about to move from our old place of residence, my main priority and those who are around me will bear witness that it is not just because we have lived in that building for 10 years and we want to move. But one of the major reasons why I want to move is to have a place where when men of God come, they will have a better place to sleep. Because when they come, they will never leave without praying with their family. They will never leave without leaving a blessing behind. Hallelujah. Because the old place, you know, I'm not trying to embarrass somebody or myself, but that's the, that's the fact. You know, we're living in a house where the basement in particular, I don't know why, you know, mouse enjoy the place. You know, you, you'll be there relaxing and they're having conference right above you. And sometimes I feel so embarrassed. And, you know, it's so interesting when you have visitors, that's why they, they you know, they, you know, we are already here before you came. You know, you see them, they want to show you child we are around, you know. Then one will cross like this, another one will cross. So, these people, what are they looking for? Hallelujah. So, you know, that was my prayer. I said, yeah, this apostle, my prayer is that the next time he comes, there will be no mass conference in my house. Hallelujah. So, you know, it, it, the, the building itself had enough rooms furnished for us. But then we went for extra mortgage to finish our basement, two bedrooms, so that when men of God, women of God come, they will have a place to sleep comfortably and also to save the church some money. We went out of our way to pay extra mortgage because if you are putting them up in a hotel, $150 per night, where some of them, they come for about a week, sometimes more than one person, it's all cost to the church. We said, let's go for extra money. Get them a place to sleep. It doesn't matter. We will pay for it. And at the end of the day, as they put up with us, and sometimes we go out of our way, in addition to what the church will give to them, we put our hands in our pocket and bless them. And they make you kneel down. They lay hands. They bless you. So church, when you see me changing my shoe, when you see me changing my suit, when you see me... Hallelujah. There are some things I'm doing, maybe you are not doing, but today I'm showing you the secret. There is a way you can provoke a father's blessing. May the Lord bless you. As you listen to this message, somebody begin to practice it, and it will be a blessing unto you. You want to rise up on your feet? We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Jehovah Almighty, Almighty. we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah Almighty. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless.
up your hands. Together we join our faith together. Your mama and myself, for what you have done, we want to release into your life every blessing, every blessing, every blessing, Father, that comes with what they have done unto us. Let it be their portion, O oh God. Father, may you bless their going out Amen. and bless their coming in. Amen. Bless their water. Amen. Father, bless their bread. Amen. Bless the work of their hands. Amen. Cause your face to shine upon them. Amen. And Father, grant them peace. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Anything that they lack in their lives. Amen. Today, let that be divine provision. Amen. Let that be divine provision. Amen. Father, for they have sown into our lives. Amen. And let whatever they have sown into our lives become a key to unlock their Amen. blessings. To unlock their blessings. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I prophesy unto you that somebody this year, the Lord, will unlock your womb. Amen. You will become a mother. Amen. You will become a mother. Amen. Somebody will become a father. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I bless your hands. Amen. Your business will take a new turn. Amen. A turning around. Amen. Things are going to get better than it has ever been. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I prophesy unto your people. Jesus. There will be no lack. Amen. There will be no lack. Amen. Delays are over. Amen. Delays are over. Amen. Frustrations are over. Amen. Disappointments are Amen. over. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The blessings and the grace upon my life. Amen. And upon mama's life. Jesus. Together we release upon you. Amen. That you will be blessed. Amen. And be blessed. Amen. And be blessed. Amen. Until you are blessed. Amen. Any part of your area Jesus. that there is a lack. Amen. Today, we cancel that lack. Amen. We nullify that lack. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord put a laughter in your mouth. Amen. May the Lord give you a reason to rejoice this year. Amen. May the Lord put a new song in your mouth. Amen. That this year you will be a testifier. Amen. You will have a reason to stand before his congregation Jesus Christ. and to testify of the goodness of the Lord. Amen. The Lord will bless you. Amen. The Lord will increase you. Jesus the Lord will expand your cause. Amen. Father, I ask for your blessings upon this hands today. Amen. We are going to share hands with every one of them and say thank you to them. I pray for your unction and anointing upon this hands. That as they shake our hands, let there be an impartation of special grace. Amen. Grace that unlocks opportunities. Amen. Grace that unlocks blessings. Jesus Christ, In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace that will bring favor. Amen. Favor that will speak for your children this year. Amen. In the name that is above every name. Amen. The name Jesus Christ. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his throne of grace. May he bless you. Amen. May he increase you. Amen. And cause his face to shine upon you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So church, before you leave, just shake our hands and leave. Amen. Great things the Lord, the Lord has done. done.